This is the Seiko Prospect SRP E93, commonly known as the Turtle from its distinctive case. Seiko divers have been worn by a list of sirs. Sir Mick Jagger, Brian May, Roger Moore, as well as Robert Redford, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and many others. I've never met a single person who cares about watches who doesn't like the Seiko Turtle. However, these days you can buy a watch with better features for less. For instance, you can buy a Steel Dive branded Seiko Homage, complete with Seiko NH35 movement, with a ceramic bezel and sapphire crystal, for a quarter the price on sale. So as iconic as it is, why would anyone still buy a genuine Seiko Turtle? In this video, I'll be reviewing the features and qualities of the Seiko SRP E93, the Turtle, and answering the most important question. Is it worth it? That, coming up next. The most instantly noticeable and distinctive feature of this watch is the 200 meter water resistant 45 millimeter wide turtle case. It sounds huge, 45 millimeters, but it wears but smaller because the case is contoured and the dial is smaller than the case. I love the way this case looks and wears. I love the look of the metalwork in particular. In some areas, it's beautifully brushed. In other areas, it's polished. Uh, it's just a beautiful look and contoured rounded case. And I love the way the metalwork is done. I think this is one of the best looking cases on a dive watch that I've seen and that's out in the market. In addition to the metalwork, another thing I appreciate about this case is the offset crown, which makes the watch comfortable from any wrist angle and it doesn't dig in when you bend your wrist. In addition, the crown has a great grip that makes it easy to handle. Unlike, say, the Orient Ray 2, which I reviewed earlier, which has a small crown with rounded grip that makes it difficult to use. Now, important to note, this is a water impenetrable screw down crown, not a push pull crown like on the Seiko 5 Sport, which looks similar. Which is the only reason, by the way, that I wouldn't buy a Seiko 5 Sport, even though they look beautiful. For me, a screw down crown on a sports watch is a necessity. To use this watch, first you unscrew the crown. The first position when it's unscrewed is the winding position. This is a self-winding watch, so you can just wear it and it'll wind. But if you're setting the time, it's good to give it a few turns uh, to wind it up so that when you set the time, there's already some power in the mainspring. So you just wind up the watch and then one click outward uh, and then you go clockwise is to set the day. So clockwise to set the day and then counterclockwise to set the date. One more click outward is the time setting. So you set the time. So now you've got the watch wound, day date, uh, the day and date set, the time set, and then you push the crown back in and then screw the crown back in. I can't begin to tell you how important this is. For people who have never had a dive watch before, often they just push the crown in, but don't bother to screw it down because they're used to a push pull crown. And then the first time they go to the beach or the pool or wherever, they end up uh, ingress of water and they can't figure out what went wrong. You have to screw the crown all the way back in until it's tight and then uh, everything will be in place and the gaskets will be in a position to make it water resistant. Many of the features of this watch are purely utilitarian, that is built for purpose. So you won't see some of the features that are perceived to be higher end but are neutral or even inferior on a dive watch. The dial features huge, bold dial markers and hands using the famous Seiko Luma Bright high-grade luminous paint with a huge lollipop seconds hand. The loom is better on this watch than on many other watches which also have excellent loom. Better than my Omega Seamaster, better than the Orient Ray 2, better than most watches. The Seiko Turtle's loom is more intense and it lasts longer. 
A lot of people don't understand that the sheer surface area of Loom makes a big difference in legibility. In this case, you have both large dial markers and high quality Loom. The dial markers are not edged with metal or precious metal, one of the features that makes this dive uh, watch a tool watch and not a dress diver. The hands have huge amounts of Loom and are nicely polished and rounded. The unidirectional rotating dive bezel is super grippy and the ratcheting movement of the bezel is superb. The bezel insert is aluminum, not ceramic, which means that over time it will likely get some scratches. Ceramic bezels look fancy and they don't scratch, which is why a lot of people like them. But in the sun, you typically get shine off ceramic bezels that make them less legible than painted aluminum. Now, the crystal. The crystal is made of hard lex, a specially hardened mineral crystal made by Seiko. On the Mohs scale of hardness, with 10 being a diamond, regular mineral crystal is a 4, whereas hard lex is a 7 making it far less likely to scratch. However, sapphire crystal is even harder at 10. So why would Seiko use hard lex when sapphire crystal only costs a few dollars more? Well, it's because hard lex is scratch resistant enough and is less likely to break. A diamond is hard, but when struck with a hammer, it can smash into little pieces. You have to give sapphire crystal a pretty hard smack to make it break, but nonetheless, this is a diver's tool watch, and not breaking into pieces is more important than not getting a cosmetic scratch, so Hardlex is better. In addition, Hardlex crystal is less reflective in sunlight, and therefore it doesn't require an anti-reflective coating like on sapphire crystal. At this point, I should note, if you really want the dress diver features of sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel, and metal around the dial markers, Seiko makes the same style of watch in various King Turtle versions. My favorite is the SRP E07 with its beautiful blue wave dial. The strap on the Seiko Turtle is a silky smooth, ultra comfortable silicone strap, and as you can see, it's thick. The part that's not so comfortable is the hardware on the strap. It looks great, I love the Seiko branding, I love the metal brushwork, but it's thick and it's heavy and I find that with the thick strap it can form uncomfortable angles. However, the thick strap and hardware are part of the requirements for being a certified dive watch. I'll be doing a whole video about certified dive watches later. The strap, hardware and springs must be able to withstand 200 newtons of force the equivalent of pulling on it with 45 pounds of weight. So the decreased comfort with the heavier hardware is part of giving this strap life and death reliability. Inside the wonderful Japanese wave design case back is the Seiko 4R36 movement. If it looks similar to movements you've seen in many other watches with day and date, that's because it probably is. This movement is called the 4R36 when used by Seiko and the NH36 when sold to many other brands, but it's the same movement. It has a 41 hour power reserve. It's self winding using the magic lever system. Uh, you can see my Invicta Pro Diver video for details about how that works. And it has a second hand hack, which stops the second hand so you can set the exact time. Note that the also famous but now discontinued Seiko SKX dive watch did not have hacking seconds and it wasn't hand winding. So this is an improvement on both of those things in this model of turtle. Officially, the accuracy on this watch is a lousy plus 45 to minus 35 seconds a day. But don't let that concern you. Seiko always wildly understates its accuracy due to typical Japanese modesty, I guess. Expect a variation of less than two seconds a day. It's a tough, reliable movement, and should you ever need repairs, it's such a popular movement that watchmakers will have parts for it for the next 200 years at least. So, back to the main question at the beginning of this video. The Seiko Turtle is a great dive watch. Nobody disputes that. But is it worth it? For many people, the answer is going to be 
no, it isn't worth it. If you just want a dive style watch that looks great and is durable enough for the beach and snorkeling, watches like the Steel Diver Eddie's Dive are perfectly fine. They look fantastic, they have better features, at least on paper, they're inexpensive, they use reliable Seiko movements, and they're durable enough. However, these watches would likely not pass the toughness test that the Seiko Turtle passes easily. Maybe the loom isn't bright enough, or it doesn't last as long, maybe the case rusts more easily in seawater, or the gaskets crumble, the movement is more prone to magnetism through the case, the springs and straps are weaker, etc. I was trying to think of a good analogy, and the best one I could come up with is buying something like a 2010 GM Hummer versus a 2010 Military Humvee. The GM Hummer looks nicer, but the Military Humvee has far greater capabilities. They look similar, but they're not the same. In short, if you want good looks and reasonable toughness, for most people a watch like a Steel Dive or Addy's Dive will more than suffice. If you want rugged durability at a reasonable price, buy the Seiko Turtle SRP E93. Or if you prefer fancy but still tough, and you care about scratches and scuffs, there's that beautiful blue dress version with the sapphire crystal and ceramic bezel, the SRP E07, for about $100 more. Well, that's my review of the Seiko Turtle. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to purchase any of these watches and would like to support this channel, there are affiliate links in the description. A huge thank you to everyone who uses them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.